Here we're going to talk a little bit about diffusion. Diffusion is the uh, movement of a solute uh, due to random molecular motion. And one of the things we know about diffusion is it tends to occur from regions of high concentration to regions of lower concentration, as we see here down here in our little example. Right? We have a higher concentration of our red solute on this side and a lower concentration on this side. Now, the most simplistic version of diffusion defined by Fick's law is when we're just diffusing a solute in solution. In other words, like in a glass of water or a little bit more comp complex solution like cytoplasm or the interstitial fluid, as we're showing here. Um, and Fick's law basically says that there are certain factors that determine the rate at which something would diffuse. And really that's the important part is what are those factors and how do those factors affect that rate of diffusion. And so we can see we have a few uh, key terms here. We have D, which is our diffusivity up here at the top. And that's relatively standardized for uh, physiological scenarios. It's determined by the size of the molecule in question, which isn't going to change, the kinetic energy, which is determined by the, the, the temperature, and the solution viscosity. Again, tends to be relatively fixed, but of course, different for different solutes, this diffusivity. A is the surface area across which we have to diffuse this. And that's a little bit more obvious when we're diffusing across capillary walls and they have a particular surface area or in and out of a cell that has also a particular surface area, right? Imagine a cell that looks like this versus a cell that looks like this. And you can imagine that the surface areas are dramatically different and therefore diffusion in and out of those two cells may be quite different as well. It's also determined by the concentration gradient, which is simply the difference in the concentrations between one region and another region. And again, they have to be different for us to have net diffusion from one region to another. And then finally by delta x, or the distance between uh, across which we are diffusing this particular substance. Now note that the first three terms, d, a, and delta c, are on top of this equation here, right? Only delta x is under a fraction here. And that means that dA and delta C are directly proportional to the diffusion rate. In other words, when dA or delta C go up, so does diffusion, and vice versa. Delta X, on the other hand, is inversely proportional. And as distance rises, that means that the diffusion rate would actually fall. And that makes a lot of sense, right? Diffusion would take a lot longer to occur uh, over a much larger distance. Now, that's diffusion in a solution. Diffusion gets a lot more complex when we start talking about diffusion across lipid bilayers or across capillary walls. And that's because we have now a barrier in place, right? Or at least a potential barrier. And so for um, hydrophobic solutes that dissolve into cell membranes, a lipid bilayer, it doesn't really matter. The surface area is still entirely available for them to cross that membrane and we don't have to worry about it. When we start to talk about hydrophilic solutes, uh, or at least some degree of, of, of hydrophilicity, then they don't diffuse well across the lipid bilayer. And we add another factor to the equation to determine their rate of diffusion across the membrane. We have to add a term, right? And again, the, the, the equation we have here initially is for diffusion in a solution. Uh, if we're going to talk about diffusion across the lipid bilayer, we're going to have to add a, a term called lambda, which accounts for that solubility. So for a solute that is very lipophilic and can dissolve into the membrane, this is lambda would be very high, and it would not affect our diffusion rate, or at least not dramatically. For a very hydrophilic solute, lambda could be near zero, or ze near zero, I guess, um, in which case our we're multiplying by zero or almost zero here, um, and our diffusion rate would be very low. Okay, now how then would a hydrophilic solute actually cross a membrane? Well, we have to provide a, a pathway for it. We have to use either a transport molecule or we provide a pore or a channel uh, shown here, right? And they provide what we refer to as permeability. So in that scenario, right, for a hydrophilic solute, we would have to have those pathways, and we would then use a term called permeability 
to determine the, the uh, accessibility of that solute to pass through the membrane, whether, whether it be a cell membrane or a capillary wall, right? We would have to talk about the permeability uh, across that, that barrier, right? And so we end up with multiple versions of Fick's law depending upon what we're, where we're talking about diffusion, either in solution, through the lipid bilayer, or through pores in a lipid bilayer or in a capillary wall, right? And again, it's not so important that we are able to plug numbers into these equations as it is that we understand the factors that affect diffusion for any particular solute.